What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got a little bit different video to do. We're going to be taking a look at two traditional slip joint style folding knives, specifically Great Eastern Cutlery Knives, uh, number 15s. This is the number 15 Navy Knife. Let's take a look at that real quick. And this is the um, Diamond Series or I guess you could call it the more premium version, uh, the GEC 15 Rope Knife. Um, both of these knives are beautiful, made in the USA, made in true traditional style. I have a lot of good things to say about both of these knives. Real quick, I'm going to explain why I've got both of them on the table and why they're not getting individual reviews. Um, so I am very new to the traditional knife world. Um, nostalgia uh, got the best of me at some point, and I, I realized I really want one of these old school American made um, uh, slip joint knives. Uh, I've been carrying the Victorinox Cadet for a very long time. I love this knife, but I, I just want one that looks like this. And uh, so I latched on to Great Eastern Cutlery, did a little bit of research, found out that uh, Great Eastern Cutlery kind of runs the show in this uh, department. And uh, the number 15 specifically seemed to be very popular because of their size um, and styling, things like that. And so I latched on to that um, and uh, decided I want to get one of these for myself. Had some funds from um, some knives that uh, David had originally purchased we had and we, that we had sold. And then I thought, you know, I'm going to use some of these to um, purchase some, some number 15s to show on the channel because I do have requests for uh, traditional knives. And then I'm going to use my own funds to uh, decide which one I want to keep for myself. Um, it's not going to be either of these. I love both of these, but it's not going to be either of these. And they're actually both sold. Um, so they'll be shipping out today. So I have to get this video done today. Um, they are essentially the exact same knife though. So it, it kind of works out. I'm going to go over the differences and what I, what I love about these knives. Um, but, uh, first off, let's go ahead and take some measurements here. Uh, I'll get out my crusty tape measure as one. One of my viewers pointed out he hates this tape measure. It is old. Sorry about that. Uh, overall length, just shy of six and a quarter inches. Blade length coming in at definitely under three inches. Looks to be a little over two and three quarters overall, though the cutting edge is about right on two and a half inches. So pretty cool. Let's do some size comparisons here with some, you know, more modern style knives. Uh, Ontario Rat Model 1 coming in at 8.6 inches and completely dwarfing both knives. How about the Spyderco Paramilitary 2? PM2, a lot of these knives are going to be way bigger, so I'm not going to light them up butt to butt. PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. Uh, how about the Benchmade Griptilian? Benchmade Griptilian coming in at 8 inches overall. Uh, how about the Spyderco Delica? Delica coming in at seven inches overall. Uh, how about one that's more the same size or closer to the same size? How about the Victorinox Cadet? The Cadet, I think, coming in at just probably right at six inches. So these are a little bit bigger than the Victorinox Cadet. I think if any of you who are not familiar with Great Eastern Cutlery and, and maybe you are familiar with the uh, Victorinox Cadet, that's a really good size comparison. That's a size comparison. You know, when I first saw that, I thought, that's the one I want. I want the number 15. It's just slightly bigger than the Cadet, so it'll be very similar in terms of carry. Now, I carry knives like this, specifically the Cadet, in my back right-hand pocket, or my rear pot, my rear right-hand pocket. Um, my front right-hand pocket is reserved for my primary knife. So, for example, today, it's the uh, Keen and the uh, Cadet. Now the Cadet, you know, it's got other tools on it and it's way less expensive generally than the, the knife I keep in my right hand pocket. So when I have people request, hey, can I borrow your knife? I'd rather hand them the Cadet than a, whatever two, three, four hundred dollar knife I've got in my front right hand pocket because that's people cut stupid things when they don't, when they're not knife people. So that's fine. It's that's not, no fault of theirs. It's just uh, me being uh, preventative. So um, anyway, so I got, I, I decided to get these two, or actually I decided to get this one first. I hunted this down, thought it was beautiful, um, really was looking for a, uh, a GEC 15 with a sheep's foot or Warncliffe style blade. Uh, this rope knife really spoke to me with the long pole, the, uh, the beautiful way they do the unexcelled logo, um, the texturing on the jig bone, which by the way, this is antique amber jig bone. 
I love the rope designs on the bolster and on the bale that added detail. Plus the fit and finish all the way around is just awesome. So I thought that's my perfect slip joint. I'm going to get that. Uh, 1095 steel, by the way. So I get it and I look at it and, and by the way, you know, uh, brand new, these things go for, I think the one on the bottom goes for 110, 115-ish, I don't know. They're all limited runs, so it's not like you, can, you, can't, you can't go buy the one on the bottom. I had to get it on the secondary market. The one on the top goes for about 88 bucks on GP knives right now, but it will probably soon be gone. These are all limited run knives, as far as I understand. By the way, if you, I'm very new. I'm I'm very new to slip joint style knives. So if I sort of skim over something that should have more detail, feel free to fill it in in the comment section, or and absolutely feel free to um, correct me where I'm wrong because I guarantee I will get at least one thing wrong in this video. Um, anyway, so I got it and I was like, yeah, I had to pay more than this thing um, was worth brand new and it's really beautiful and it was a limited run. So I thought eh, maybe I should get kind of a lesser version of it. Uh, the Navy knife is uh, still a very premium version, or I'm sorry, a very, a very premium and well-made knife, but it's a, a lesser version of the more detailed rope knife. This is also made in 440C, which to me was a little more ideal given that 440C is stainless, 1095 is not. So I went ahead and paid the very justified $88 for this knife. Then I got them both and played with them a little bit and I realized I don't really like the bail. And most people who carry knives like these as a uh, primary EDC, I, um, I've seen kind of, they either just carry them bare in their up their uh, right hand pocket or left hand pocket because they're ambidextrous knives, um, or they slip them in a leather pouch that keeps the bail facing up. And what that does is it allows you easier access. You know, if it's if this is in your pocket in a leather sleeve, it's sitting like this and you can just pull it out of your pocket. Because I keep these, uh, or I would carry these knives in my, my uh, rear right hand side pocket, when I sit down, I sit on that bale, or I would, I didn't actually do this, I haven't used either of these knives because they're sold and they're going to um, their new owners as brand new knives. But if I were to sit down, I would sit on that bale and it would bother me. Or maybe I'd bend it, I don't know. That's That was my fear and I just didn't want to mess with that. So. I kept hunting and I'll give you a sneak preview. The one I'm actually going to keep is this uh, green micarta uh, GEC 15 uh, crown lifter. So it's also got the, um, the bottle opener. And I'll go into detail about this knife and why I'm going to keep it and why I love it so much. But it does not have the bail um, and it is more to my liking. So um, that's the one I'm going to keep. Now that's not to say that these knives aren't great. These knives are definitely, I'm hopefully going to bring their new owners uh, a lot of joy. And these will obviously make a lot of people happy and have been making people happy for a long time. The bail is just not for me. Um, it's too bad because truthfully, this, this blade shape just nailed it for me. I mean, this is one of the most beautiful blades I've ever seen. That long pole, as I've come to understand, is what that's called. Can we please keep these uh, fingerprints off this blade? Oh my gosh. It just looks amazing. I love that. Uh, both of these these knives are, are easy access when they're in the handle. You can see that the way the blade sticks up. I don't even use the pull. Honestly, that's just an aesthetic bonus for me. Um, but you can get your fingers up here, and it's it's so easy uh, to pull it uh, from the handle. So I, I really do appreciate that with these knives. Um, that that part is just absolutely excellent. Now, on top of that, there are definitely other excellent things to point out. Um, I'll let you guys read about uh, the history on the um, the blade shape here. I'm not going to go into that, but if you want to pause and look at the back of this, um, this is the um, the one at the bottom. If you want to read that, um, you can go ahead and pause the video and, and take a look at that. It's pretty interesting. But the nice thing about these knives is not only are they non-locking knives, not only are they two and a half inch blade, under three inch blades overall. Um, they're they're also um, uh, a two-handed opener which makes them incredibly legal in most places and that's nice because not everybody needs a hyper tactical uh, one-handed opening one-handed closing knife like this some people just want a simple cutting tool um, and these uh, these are not going to scare people you know Tina at the front desk of your office needs her bag of pretzels open well it's a lot easier to pull this out in front of Tina um, than, than it is to whip something like this out you know that's if, if this is the route you're going for that, I know I use that example all the time, but if that's the route you're going, you probably should approach that situation a little bit differently. Um, but this makes it easy. I would say anybody who's afraid of this, and I'm, I'm generally pretty careful with what I say, anybody who's afraid of a knife like this, 
Like, someone's like, hey, hey, you know, I need to open this. Oh, okay, no problem. Anybody who gets scared of that, I, I'm sorry, but that's their problem. At that point, that's their problem. If they're afraid of this, just all of a sudden, I mean, I kind of get that. That's kind of intense. You know, even being a knife guy, I get that. Uh, these knives are not scary. They, I mean, they are, they have been around forever. I, I mean, this style, everybody's, everybody's grandpa had this in their pocket or a knife like this pretty much at all times. I feel like, you know, that's just kind of, that was, that, it was like, you know, part of my grandpa. He always had a slip joint style pocket knife. It was just, that's, that's what everybody did. And, you know, men, especially from that time period were always carrying pocket knives. Um, and, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm attracted to that idea for, for nostalgic reasons and because I truly appreciate the design of these knives and the, the fact that, you know, this is a time-tested design. It works and it still works today despite it not being made out of carbon fiber and M390, which that would be cool. And, you know, WE and, or I'm sorry, WE knives and JE knives, you know, or JE made, they're exploring this idea of slip joints. I mean, obviously there's other brands that are doing it. Benchmade's doing it too, but they're exploring this idea of new tactical style uh, slip joints with new or modern materials. Um, yeah, M390 and carbon fiber would be great with like titanium bolsters. That'd be super cool. Is it necessary on a knife like this? No, absolutely not. These are uh, the top ones, 440C steel, the bottom ones, 1095, which holds true to the traditional old school materials that you would find on a slip joint knife. The top one, its scales are um, old barn chestnut, and I don't doubt they actually came off of an old barn. That's kind of what I've found out about Great Eastern Cutlery is that they actually like to include some history in, in uh, their knives, and, and oftentimes they get that from the scales. Um, the, the Beer Scout knives, you know, I, I was looking into a run of those. Uh, they, there was like Beer Barrel Oak. They actually got a bunch of old beer barrels or a beer barrel from uh, an old, uh, I guess it was a, a distillery or, or, um, or wherever. I'm not sure about the exact history on it, but they actually made the scales out of a beer barrel. And I, I think that's, uh, I think that's pretty cool. Um, now I'm questioning whether or not I'm using the word distillery correct. I don't know. One of you guys will correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong here. You guys are pretty good about that. Um, but anyways, um, I, I think that's really cool. 440C, uh, plenty appropriate for the top one. 1095, of course, also appropriate for the bottom one. 440C was more appealing to me because it was stainless and I'd have to baby it less. But neither of these knives are going to be used or their intended purpose is not is definitely not hard use. This is the type of knife you open a simple package with, a box, maybe you cut a little bit of rope or twine, something like that. Convenient, small cuts. These are not knives that, that are meant to be used hard for hours on end. So the edge retention on 440C and 1095, no, it's it's not it's not the best in the whole world. Does it need to be? No, because you're really not going to generally not going to be using a knife like this in a way that would require um, the edge retention to be incredible, you know? Um, so, uh, uh, I, I think they're both great choices and they've also been around for a, a long enough time that, that they're perfectly justified on, on a design like this. So I really appreciate that. Um, in case you guys are wondering, so I don't know how to, me I know that the pole is measured between one and 10, but I can't remember if 10 is light or 10 is weak. From what I understand, what I'm feeling here is about a five. So that's all I can tell you because I don't have anything else to compare it to. Both of them feel exactly the same. They're solid on the lockout, no blade play. Um, the mid stop is nice and solid and they come down um, uh, nice and, and tight and they, they're both perfectly centered. Um, so I, I really like that. You know, that's really, really nice. On a little tiny knife like this, for whatever reason, I feel like it would be easier um, to have some tolerance or fitting issues and uh, there aren't. Excuse me, I had to stop the video again. The one at the bottom is definitely more premium than the one at the top, and just in terms of the look and um, you know, the, just the extra little tiny details. I'll give you guys kind of a close-up of them side by side um, so you can see. Um, but they're both made extremely well. They're both centered. They both have, um, they both, neither of them have blade play. Um, they're both just really, really nice. But you can see there, you know, this one brand new is just going to run a little bit more than the Navy knife. Um, the nicest thing, really the nicest thing about these knives is that they are USA made. 
um, by a company that's that's been a, around for a long time and is known for making these these limited runs. So you kind of get this feeling of being not only in like a club of people who really appreciate, um, you know, really well made traditional style knives, but you also kind of get that feeling that you you have something exclusive because there's not there's not unlimited of them made, you know, they, they make a few and then they move on and then they, they move on to production, production of a different number. And then when they come back to a specific style of a specific number, they use a different material or they do something different with a blade or you know, they, they do something different. It's fun. It's kind of like what Spyderco does with sprint runs, except it's all the time with these slip joint style knives. So, you know, I, I, I really, really like that. Now, for those of you who are way more familiar with this world than me, I know you're cringing at my lack of knowledge of all this. Um, but uh, I'm, you know, I, if you've ever been to the, if you've ever been to the gym, and that that guy who comes in, you can tell it's his first day, and he's he the day before he went and he bought the gloves and he bought the headband and he bought the the long sleeve Under Armour shirt that he's wearing underneath another um, uh, workout shirt and he's wearing the 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 tights, you know all that. You know, I'm that guy for this world. I really don't know what I'm doing. I want to be part of the club. I want to. I I really want to learn and and figure out you know everything or learn everything there is to know. I mean, within reason, obviously. I can't dedicate all my time to this, but um, I do love these knives and I think they're awesome. And uh, you know, yeah, I think I imagine some people are like starting with the 15 is you, you're you just jumping on the bandwagon, and I probably am, but I really do like the number 15. I, I like that size. Um, it compares well with my Cadet, and that's what I've, I've been used to. Um, so I'm, I'm interested in it. And uh, I don't know if I brought this up in another video or not, but my very first knife ever was a slip joint style knife, and it was my grandpa's knife who gave it to my dad, who gave it to me when I was nine or 10. I found that knife, and uh, I will be doing a video on it. I've got a cool story about it. Um, but uh, I still have it and so the, these are nostalgic for me um, and uh, I, I've just I have this growing appreciation for them. I'm also going to talk about where I would like to see this trend go because I do like some of the more modern ones and I'm excited that it's a thing right now and I kind of want to talk about where I hope it goes. Um, I hope it's not just a fad. I hope that it, it becomes a, a thing that's that's all the time. Maybe that's wishful thinking. I don't know. Um, but, uh, if, if, if it goes that way, you will definitely see more on this channel. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I'll, I'll let you look here just to go into more de detail about the fit and finish on this one. The, the one I consider the lesser of the two, you can see the pins and everything look really nice. Everything is fitted really, really nice up to the bolster. The acorn looks good. The fitment of the bale is great. Uh, the transition between the bolsters and the scales, all, all that just looks really, really nice. This one is also... Um, perfectly, perfectly centered. I mean, it's just nice. 88 bucks, made in the USA, legal almost everywhere, super light. By the way, we haven't weighed them yet. Let's go ahead and weigh them. Um, there's just like, there's so much to like about these things. I just really, really like them. Okay, honestly, the the old, the oak one feels lighter. Yeah, well, okay, 1.69. One point nine four. I imagine the jig bone scales are just heavier than the than the uh, uh, old barn scales. Yeah, because they're exactly the same. It's just the jig bone is a little bit heavier. Maybe it's a little more solid. I don't know. These are incredible knives. Um, I can absolutely one hundred percent recommend Grace, at least Great Eastern Cutlery Number no. Fifteens. Um, if you have not checked these out and you're interested in slip joint knives. My recommendation is start here because you know what? They generally don't run all that much. You will have to wait for a run that is in production. Currently, you can get these at least at GP Knives right now for about $88. Um, so check those out if you really like that one. Um, but uh, I urge you to, to keep an eye out. Go to Great Eastern Cutlery's website. They list uh, what's currently in production and what's about to be in production and what materials they're going to be using. It's kind of fun and exciting to, to wait for something like that. I, I enjoy that that wait and that buildup, that anticipation. So I'm definitely going to be a part of that in the future and expect to see more of these on this channel. 
Um, but uh, absolutely 100% recommended. The, the issue with the bale is, is purely a personal issue. If you plan on carrying this knife in your front right pocket, it's darn near a perfect knife. It absolutely, these knives, get 15s in general, are going to go on my most recommended knives of all time playlist. Uh, so if you haven't checked that playlist out, please check it out. But in any case, that's going to be pretty much it for today, guys. So I hope you all enjoyed this video as always. If you did, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So please check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then please subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. Thanks for watching and have a great day.